When you're using the Black-Scholes option pricing formula, sometimes you ask your, you want to know how sensitive is the price of the option to changes in certain variables. Uh, by convention, we use Greek letters to stand for these sensitivities, uh, and therefore we oftentimes refer to these collectively as the option Greeks. Now let's take a look at the, the first one, which is delta. Delta tells us how does the options premium change for a small change in the price of a stock? And what we do here to calculate it is we take the partial derivative of the uh, premium with respect to the stock price. Okay, We could do that for the call or for the put. And it turns out that delta is the hedge ratio. And the hedge ratio, which we discussed in a couple of other videos, uh, particularly the binomial option pricing formula, um, indicates how many units of a particular option are necessary to mimic the returns of the underlying asset. Now, why is that important? It's important because we're able to create a risk-free portfolio and if the portfolio is risk-free, then it ought to return the risk-free rate. And that's essentially how options are priced. It turns out that delta for call option in the Black-Scholes option pricing formula is ND1. And it turns out that for a put, it's ND1 minus 1. And you may recall D1 is a calculation that's done, and the N stands for the cumulative normal standard normal distribution. So you would calculate D1, you'd look it up on a, uh, a normal distribution table and figure out what ND1 is. It turns out that delta is also a crude measure of the likelihood of the option finishing in the money on the expiration day. So if the option has a delta of 0.45, there's about a 45% chance the stock price will be above the exercise price on expiration day, okay, in the case of a call option. The second uh, Greek I want to talk about is theta, and that's a measure of the sensitivity of an option to the time remaining until its expiration. Okay, theta probably theta is used because T for time. And again, you take the partial derivative of the premium with respect to time. And if you work that out, you get this formula for the, this theta for the call option and this theta for the put option. Now, the passage of time hurts the holder of a long option position. So theta means the loss in premium due solely to the passage of time. And we would expect that, right? Because if the, as time goes on, that long position you have that allows you to buy if it's a call option or sell if it's a put option, the less time you have to use it, the less valuable it is, okay? You can sometimes think of that as your, as, uh, your auto insurance policy. If you just renewed your policy and you have 365 days until it matures or until it expires, okay, it's much more valuable than if it expires tomorrow. Okay, it turns out that these formulas give us the theta per year, which isn't particularly useful. So you can convert it to a daily theta, okay, by dividing it by 365. Gamma is the second derivative of the option premium with respect to price. And sometimes it's referred to as curvature. And again, you can see we're taking a second derivative, or in this case, we're taking the derivative of delta with respect to price, okay? whether it's for a put or a call. And if you work that out, you'll get this formula. And it turns out that the gamma for a call is the same as the gamma for a put. Now, one use of gamma is a measure of how often option portfolios need to be adjusted after a stock price change. Options with a gamma near zero have deltas that are not particularly sensitive to changes in the stock price. And if you think about it, gamma is going to be at a maximum when an option is at the money or near the money. Okay, If it's way out of the money, a change in the price of the stock 
isn't going to have really any impact on the portfolio. If it's way, way in the money, the same thing is also true. But if it's at or near the money, then a small change in the stock price may necessitate adjusting the portfolio. VEG is a measure of the sensitivity of an option to the volatility of the underlying asset. And again, VEGA V uh, for volatility. And again, taking these partial derivatives of the premium with respect to the standard deviation or the volatility. Uh, turns out that VEGA is positive for both long calls and long puts, and it's actually the same for both puts and calls. And if you think about it, it makes sense that it's positive for long positions because when you own a long position in a call, you actually want the stock price to move a lot because if it falls a lot, it just finishes out of the money, you lose the premium. But if it goes up a lot, then you're able to cash in and perhaps cash in a lot if it's gone up significantly over the exercise price. Similarly with a put. You want, the, you want the stock price to move a lot. Now, when we own stock, we generally don't like volatility. But when we own options, we like it to move a lot because of that, uh, that limited downside loss. Okay? All you're going to lose is the premium. Rho is the uh, first partial derivative of the Black-Scholes option pricing model with respect to the risk-free rate. So R for risk-free and you get these two formulas here okay this one with respect to the call option and this one with respect to the put option and rho is the least important of the derivatives okay it's positive for calls and it's negative for puts it may have some value if it's a if the option expires uh, a long time from now but if it doesn't expire if it's not a an option that has a long time till expiration then row is not particularly important. And here we have a little sign relationship that um, is worth perhaps memorizing. Okay, uh, If you have a long call position, delta is positive. That makes sense, right? If the stock price goes up, the value of the call, yeah, the call is more valuable. Um, put is negative, right? Because that's the, if the stock price goes up, the put gets more out of the money, okay, or less in the money, so that's negative, okay, and then obviously if you have opposite positions, these signs change, okay. Theta, we said this uh, value of the option with respect to time, we said for a long position, it's negative, right? As time passes, the option position becomes less valuable. It's positive for short positions because as the passage of time goes then there's less chance that the option will be exercised against you if you think about my example with auto insurance okay your auto insurance policy is worth more when there's 365 days until it expires right because you have a lot of coverage you have a lot of days of coverage but it's not very valuable when there's only one day left of coverage but for the insurance company, as you move through time, okay, there's less days for them to cover, so that becomes more valuable to them. So they're on the short side of this position. Okay, gamma, gamma is positive for the call and for the put. Remember, this is the second derivative with respect to the stock price, and it's negative for short positions. And a, a good way to remember this, theta is easy to remember, so it has the opposite signs of theta. Okay, so positive up here, negative down here. So that's a, a brief introduction to the um, option Greeks. Okay, they can be quite valuable in terms of understanding what happens to the value of an option when certain variables change.